Okay, everybody, welcome out to Friday night online class. Uh, we're talking about this is business training, so top 10 smart business strategies and tips for sharing doTERRA essential oils. Um, we have a wonderful um, stuff prepared. We were just talking about it earlier that, um, you know, this is a lot of like life hack um, ideas, things that will make your life better, not just in, you know, sharing essential oils with other people, but also um, in improving your business, um, you know, and all, all sorts of different facets. So really excited to get into this uh, material. We've posted it all online on um, jbaldon.com. You can go on there and just search up. The title for today's class is Top 10 Business Tips and Strategies. So you can find it there or just go onto the business training um, page, um, you know, that we've created for all of our business training um, downloads and tools and everything like that. So tonight we have a uh, hundred people visiting us, but we can only see two. Um, we've got <laughs> Beth Sundstrom from the amazing state of Florida and Dave and I also um, from that uh, amazing state. <laughs> so knuckles for everybody knuckles. from amazing state. Um, we're serving <laughs> refreshments. Um, so I hope you all take advantage of those tonight <laughs> at our house. <laughs> Thanks for coming, everybody. All right. So, and we we know that there are a lot of you that can't get on at this time. Hope you take you're taking advantage of the free podcast, uh, amazing YouTube videos that we're posting for all of these classes. Um, is I think will provide a lot of value for you as you develop your doTERRA business. Um, and if you're not really into that and you're listening to this because of all the other information we're giving on the podcast, um, listen anyways because you got some amazing tips and tricks that will work you know, in, in your life and, um, you know, in your relationships as well. So without further ado, I would like to, I would like to introduce um, our key <laughs> presenter, our rock star extraordinaire, Jade Baldwin. Now, Jade Baldwin has um, over five, six years experience uh, teaching people about essential oils, natural wellness um, solutions, and just sharing um, the love of, you know, using natural solutions to improve the health of your family and to Im improve your own health so you have more time and energy and vitality. Um, one big announcement we want to make, I don't know if we announced this earlier this week, but we've just put out an ebook. It's, it's, it's only an eight page ebook, so it's really easy to print out, um, easy, easy to digest. That's also available at jadebalden.com slash ebooks, or just go on there. You can, you can see on the right-hand side of things. Um, so come and check out that amazing, um, you know, tool that you have to, it's free. Um, just need to go, go on there, fill out the form, and get your ebook. So without further ado, um, I'll turn the time over to Jade, who will tell us more about the topic that we're going to talk about tonight. Jade? All right. Thank you, Ben. That's a nice introduction. Knuckles. <laughs> So oh, let's share the screen. <laughs> For those of you that can't see it, you know, this eerie voice comes on and says, the couples and smack, smack their knuckles together. <laughs> I don't know if you ever saw that in movies where a voice comes in and tells you what they're doing. The it's, narrator. Yeah, because blind people can't see the actions. <laughs> Sorry, that was completely unnecessary no. to say. <laughs> so we're going to start sharing the screen now, honey. Okay. All righty, so this is... We put it up on jadebolden.com here so that you can all read along and, and um, follow along what to, what we're going to talk about. So we're going to start um, with the first thing on the list here. Um, oh, yeah. We do have a handout that's shortened, but we'll share it. Uh, um, yeah. Okay. We'll share it now. Okay. We might um, use this handout to guide us okay. as we so go through our discussion see? tonight. Can you see that? And th there's even more mm -hmm. information online on, on, mm -hmm. on that website. Uh -huh. Yep. We can do that. So we have a, just a quick summary of it. Um, but uh, mm -hmm. yeah, we'll start with the, the first thing. So are you looking that up right now? Yeah. Do you okay. want to go back to the website? Or yes, you, please. Good? Okay. So I can look at it, the notes that we put on there. Okay, so we have 10 tips here. Yep. So the very first one is activity breeds activity. Uh, this is very, you know, this is something that I see all the time. Um, we need to, if you, if people are interested in building this business, you need to just start with activities. 
sometimes it's hard for me to tell them what to do because, um, you know, they, they have to adapt and adjust the business to their lives. But as they start doing something, something will happen. Um, many people will start, um, will say, well, I would like to do this business, uh, but, um, you know, I don't have time for classes. So, and then they wonder why their business is not growing. So when you make time for it, um, you know, then having one class and from that class, we have other people that will, you know, join and that will, um, you know, ask you, can you teach another class for my cousin, you know, when she comes into town and, and just things will start moving along. Um, but a lot of people would just think, oh, I don't have a lot of people that are interested or we're just waiting until we have enough people interested and then I'll, I'll set up a class. But it's the other way around. Mm -hmm. You want to say something? So, so it's, it's like magic. If you're working on something, that thing will expand because mm -hmm. you're thinking about it, you're focusing on it. Mm -hmm. you're, you're, and that's part of it. And we'll talk about this a little bit later, but that's one of the principles of, you know, applying your faith mm -hmm. in that is not just believing in it, but actually doing something about it. Yeah. So it's like the law of attraction. Mm -hmm. um, just start moving in that direction. Yeah, I have seen so many people that I consider very intelligent, very capable, have high potential. But at the end of the day, the people that are really, really successful, the people that are just busy, they're busy finding out ways to do um, their business sharing and they're just finding activities and sometimes we don't know what we like until we try it right we tell our kids that all the time with food but uh, I have a friend that uh, she she's like she freaked out at first. she's like I don't know how to teach a class and now three years later she's uh, silver and doTERRA and she can't <clears throat> she can't stop sharing even when she's on holiday, she's like, it's just so easy. Um, but at first, you know, you have to kind of start somewhere. And she says she has no problem um, working. There's just so much to do, so little time. So many people want this. So many people want to book with her because at every class, uh, she asks people, um, you know, do you know anybody that would benefit from this? And, you know, they will raise their hands and they will say, hey, um, yes, my cousin, I'll bring my cousin next week. Or, hey, this date doesn't work or this time doesn't work. Do you think you can ha have a class with my cousin or have a meeting with us? And then here she is booking people in and she's just so busy. So her, you know, her problem is that, you know, she just has to schedule the, the time to find to, to help people. But I see a lot of people, they, they come to me week after week. Oh, this week has been so busy. I uh, haven't had time to do any doTERRA. It's because they haven't planned it. And they, you know, they can't um, understand that power of now. As in, you know, what can I do now? Even if it's a little bit, I can do something now. I can call somebody, text somebody, just put a date down. Um, I have two people that are doing Diamond Club now and they're amazing because at first I was telling them that they'd need to set um, their calendar four months in advance and they were saying, whoa, I don't even know what's going to happen then. And I said, I don't know, you don't know, it doesn't matter. Let's just plan ahead and when we get there, um, if there's something that comes up, we can adjust that week. But at least you have four months months plan and so what's happening now is you know normally they will enroll maybe five people a month but they're going you know and they're very close to like 18 20 people a month now so it's like whoa wait i'm still the same person but what happened suddenly there's more enrollments and more people that we're they're meeting it's just amazing so that's anything else you want to say about so that's the, that's activity? that's the um principal activity yeah. breeds activity so putting that into place uh, for most business builders or people wanting to do the business, the m best thing you can do right now is set a date. Yeah. So um, the thing that you need to do on a regular basis is, is teaching um, introductory classes, teaching yeah. people about yeah. essential oils. So set a date, put the date in your calendar. And if you've planned it, and we'll talk a little bit more about this later, um, mm -hmm. but you know, and you, you make flyers for it, you promote it. Um, this is how things get done. You, you, you plan on it. And as, as you're doing that activity and, and the planning activity and the preparing activity, things will start to come together and you'll be able to see opportunities that you wouldn't have been able to see if you yeah. didn't put a date. Yeah. Um, so 
you know, making, setting a date, making flyers, all that tells you and tells the, the people that you're inviting that this is important for you. So, um, you know, sometimes when we just ask and just, you know, see how, test the waters and see if anybody's interested, then, you know, you're sending a message to people, say, to them telling them that, hey, this business is not very important. I'm just seeing if anybody's interested because you you haven't even um, planned a date or you haven't even, um, you don't even have a flyer for it. So it's obviously not very important. Okay. So sort of like hosting a, a party, a birthday party or something. Anybody want to come? If you, you want to come, then I'll, I'll have a birthday party instead and say, hey, this is where our birthday party is. Do you think you can make it? Yeah. That's right. If you haven't set a date, it tells those people. Yeah. It wasn't even important enough for you to yeah. put it in your calendar. Mm -hmm. Why would it be important for them? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So that's, that's that. That's number one, activity breeds activity. And number two, it's owning the title. So just like any job, as soon as you get a job, you, you get a title of some sort. So you can be, a, you know, just a district manager or like a branch manager, whatever it is. You may not have worked in that area before, but now suddenly that's who you are and then you step up to it. So if you say, I am a doTERRA wellness advocate um, and you step up to that, then even if you haven't taught a class, when people say, hey, what do you do? You say, well, I help people uh, with natural remedies. Um, I help people with their health. I'll be using natural remedies or I um, create awareness of essential oils in this community. We're reintroducing the lost art of healing, something like that. Whatever it is, you step up. And I remember the first time I went to a Chamber of Commerce meeting i was very nervous because i wasn't uh, i didn't consider myself as a business owner but then as soon as i signed up for the chamber of commerce these are all business owners so i thought oh i i, I must be a business owner and um then i made myself um stand up there just they gave you two minutes just to say whatever you need to say and i tell people i help people learn about essential oils for their health and you know that's all i thought of saying but i felt like whoa but after a couple of weeks of meeting with people, I felt it. I felt that that's me. That's who I am. Even though I've only taught a handful of people, that's, that's me now. Um, and I realized that I did that with other things too, with titles, like the diamond title. I already felt like I was a diamond. I felt like I had something to say to people. I had a message for the world. So when I got diamond, everyone was like, whoa, are you surprised, amazed? And I thought, I, well, I'm not as excited and amazed as I thought I would be because I already felt that and it was already me. So it wasn't like a sudden surprise. Um, yeah. And I think that that's, that's an important thing to do, to feel it and say it and remind yourself of it. So um, this is who I am. This is what I'm doing. This is what I'm building. And also, as a business owner, um, you are no longer doing this as a hobby. So, you know, when, when some things happen, I notice a lot of people, if they, if they don't own that title, they allow those other things to, to creep into their lives and make the other things more priority. So, you know, there's a party, there's an activity at church, there's something, something, something all the time. And then suddenly they, they think, oh, well, um, well, nobody's going to come to my class. Well, maybe I should go here. And, and then you're not honouring yourself. If you were your boss and you do that, at the end of the week, you know, how many hours did you put in your business? You would fire yourself, <laughs> right? So consider that and, um, you know, consider this as uh, you know, authentic, um, what do we call that? Uh, just a proper job like everything else. Mm -hmm. So, so um, you're not letting other people or other things in your life schedule over that time that you have set aside. You said this is my prospecting time. I'm going to spend these two hours doing my business and it's your job and you treat it like that because you are a business owner and that takes priority. And so you'll have to say things like, I'm sorry, I, I can't commit to that. I'm, I'm working at that time. Mm -hmm. Could we schedule it another time? The cool yeah. thing about owning your own business is being flexible. Yeah. So you are able to move this to another time, but don't cheat yourself. You know, if you scheduled prime time, that's the time that, that's people time. When you can talk to people, um, you know, you can't really find that prime time any, anywhere else in your That's day. Right. So 
you got to think of yourself as a business person. That's right. This is your business. You're building a business, and it's something you're committed to in the long run. Right. And you might only be able to commit, you know, a few hours a week. week. Commit to it. Yep. Stick to it. Mm -hmm. um, if, if you're treating it as a hobby, it will grow as a hobby. It won't yeah. re ever, ever reach momentum. Yeah. If you treat it like a real business, it will be a business for you. So I just, I notice that there's a lot of very um, capable and uh, people with potential, but those are not the best, um, the people that are most successful in our team, actually. It's the people that are consistent. It's the moms that um, have the little babies that, or the little kids that is running around and they, they have to honor certain times with their family and they have to honor certain times with their doTERRA business. And those are the people that we actually see that are successful. It's interesting because it's not what you know. It's just actually going out and doing it and just feeling it. Yeah. So do you have any comments or anything to say? No, I don't think so. I'm just taking it all in. Awesome. So let us know if you have anything. <laughs> so, yeah. so, so Beth is, is, is actually a business owner herself. Yeah, um, she has got it. run her own business. And so Beth, you would understand that, you know, as a business owner, you have to make that a priority. You know, your time is flexible. You get a couple, you're the boss, but you still have to find yeah. that time. Yeah, wouldn't, would, wouldn't you agree, Beth? Absolutely. Well, you have to t plan the time that you're going to spend doing the prospecting and marketing at times when those people are going to be available. And then you can do your back office stuff late at night or early in the morning when you're not doing those other things. So you just have to plan it and schedule it properly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. People and, and hour, it, the prime if, people hour. Yep. And if you shortchange that time, it's that's gonna affect your business big time. Absolutely. Yeah. Because yeah. 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 you have to do those tasks that will yeah. get the business rolling. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. All right. The next thing we want to talk about is empathy. Um, empathy is about mastering the art of making friends. Um, so most of your work will be creating and, and nurturing relationships. So we really need to get really good at this. Um, so we listen well and we listen to what people really need. It's not on the surface sometimes. It's something that's below the surface. And when you get very good at this, you will meet their needs and um, then it's, it's what people need, so they, they will do it. It's not like a hard sell when um, you've provided them with a solution. It's not that you listen to the words that they're speaking, because they may not know what they need. No. They, and, and they don't know what solutions you have in store for them. No. So that how could they you know, yeah. express that? Yeah. Um, and they may say they need one thing, or this mm -hmm. is their problem, but behind that, there's mm -hmm. something else. And so you have to connect with them um, and empathize with them put yourself in their shoes yeah and when you understand their situation you know what um what of whatever you basket of goods you have to yeah. offer will meet their yeah. and will give value to them and will help them solve their problems and ease their pains the other thing about empathy is that it helps create trust so if they feel that you've connected with them they will trust you so we actually just had a call just about half an hour before this class here. Um, and the lady said that she's, she's got allergies, she's got all these problems. And she just went on and on and talked to her a little bit and we let her talk so we can hear what it is that she really is needing. So if somebody tells you, I've got this and this and this and this problem, oh, what are they asking? They're asking for comfort. They're asking for somebody, you know, do you feel this too? Do you feel this frustration too? So um, the very first thing we do is we connect with them. We say, oh, yep, I have been there. And it, I really was, you know, I had been there. I used to have a lot of allergies. And then it's like a sigh of relief you can hear. It's like, yeah, good. And I said, look, we don't have to suffer that. You know, you're probably sleeping but not feeling rested. Yes, that's me. You're probably, you know, frustrated that you can't breathe and it's itchy and you're like, what's wrong with me? I'm, I can't think straight. Yes, that's me. You know, so here she is all excited because here's a person that really understands her. And then I tell her, here's a solution. Let's get your cells cleaned up. Let's get your body cleaned up. Oh, okay, why? Oh, because um, this will help your cells manage 
better because what's happening is your cells are loaded with toxins and um, you know a little speck of dust will tip that scale over and you know cause a lot of histamines to run through your your body and um, cause you to have all these allergies oh I got it so here I am just go to this site do this and do this cleanse and she's like yep all for it let's do it now because she wants the feeling so what they're asking for is comfort and hope Okay, and so when we give that comfort and hope and say, here we are, because right now you can't fix that problem immediately. And they need to have that confidence that, hey, there's something that I can hope for. Um, and so a lot of our friends will say things like, um, uh, you know, she, she doesn't have time. You know, she says she wants to do the business, she doesn't have time. And I said, what else does she need? Um, you know, what is it really that she needs? And maybe that lady, she needs to have bite-sized to-dos to help her get into the business. Oh, or she might need um, just a little bit of an overview of what the business is all about for her to go, oh, I can do it now. Instead of imagined, you know, I probably need a 10 hour to figure out what, what this business is about. I need to wrap my head around it. I don't have that 10 hours. And guess what? It's never gonna come right? And they're always going to be busy. They don't see the value. So what does that person need? They need that value. Here is the value of this business. This is where it's going to take you in the long run. A little bit every day will gradually add up to this, you know, the lifestyle that you're looking for. And then when they see that value, they will invest their time. Uh, the, 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 the excuse, I don't have time for mm -hmm. such and such yeah. is never. A solution um, is never more time. Is, is, is always a um, cover-up to something else. They're just saying, this is not a high priority in my life because mm -hmm. everybody has 24 hours in a day. Mm -hmm. you know, if they don't have time, you know, they're, they're dead. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so they're saying, look, I have 24 hours. I've already spent it on something else. Um, and this is not as high in priority. And so, you know, what they're really saying is, it hasn't been sold to me. I don't really understand the value of it. If I see this is more valuable than what I'm, what I've spent my time on or what I yeah. plan to spend my time on, yeah. they can move it into their slot. And if they also see this is how I can do that yes, thing. That's another thing. They, they don't know how they can do it. They don't know the skills, time management. Mm -hmm. They don't know how to do the business or something like that because they know the how and, they, and it's valuable to them. No one will, will be able to, you know, yeah, it is a, an excuse of I don't have time doesn't really survive um, if that is valuable to them mm -hmm. and they know how to capture it. Yeah, and empathy is very important because you you see there's people that are very tired and stressed, and so you can see how this business can really benefit them and give them the the freedom, the time freedom that they want for to spend with their children or to, to live the life that they want to live. But, um, you know, I felt like, you know, I really can't say it all, all at once because it will be overwhelming and they don't get it. They don't quite wrap their heads around mm -hmm. my vision. But what I do is I guide, I guide people because I feel where they're at. I guide people and I say, well, you know, share these oils with so-and-so because I know that by sharing, they'll say, oh, that's not hard. And then the next step is, hey, you know, this is how you sign them up. Oh, that's not hard. And then gradually, and then later on, I see people saying, okay, tell me what this whole business is about. What's all this compensation and all these things? And then they will see the value. Because sometimes I feel like I just have to tell everybody everything all at once so that I'm honest and I think it just makes them run the other direction and go, no, 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 no none of that, please. But I see some of our leaders that are, you know, ranked high now. It's, that's where they started. They started with this panic mode mom. And uh, I don't know what to do with so-and-so and all these problems and health problems. And slowly they've turned to this powerful leader and that can manage time, that can say no, that can weed out all of the distractions in life. And I think, whoa you've changed, but I'm glad that we just kind of nudged you along and so they can see the difference. If they, if they don't want to do it, obviously, because you feel them, you, you know that that's not the path for them. But, um, yeah, that's, when, that's why we feel them out. And when you, when you talk about empathy, um, you know, when you're trying to understand what someone's needs are and, and what they're feeling, um, sometimes understanding a principle 
Well, the best way to do that is to imagine the, the absence of that principle. So imagine if you approach that, you know, that situation with a lady that had um, allergies and everything. Um, if you approach that without oh, yeah. empathy, you said, oh, allergies, here you go, take this. Without making that connection, without understanding, um, that person will most likely reject whatever you told them because they won't feel like you did a thorough diagnosis. They don't. They won't feel like they're understood. Right. Sometimes people aren't buying whatever it is you're pitching. Sometimes mm -hmm. they're buying the feeling. Sometimes they're buying, you know, the hope, uh, the, the hope or an emotion. Emotions right. sell things, mm -hmm. and that's what really people want. Mm -hmm. um, and the solution that you've provided to them, they somehow connected with you. And then they, that trust is there. Mm -hmm. So imagining a world without empathy, mm -hmm. and that's just, you know, yeah. horrible salesmen that are always just pushing yeah. things on you. Yeah. They're not con connected. You, yeah. don't, you don't trust what they're saying because you don't think they've got your back because yeah. they don't understand you. They don't know yeah. what, you know. You have a lot of fear. Problems. When you don't have empathy, you have a lot of fear because you fear that they don't understand and that they, um, they might not want to buy. So, you know, it's just kind of, uh, self-sabotaging so when you have empathy it's it's powerful and you don't have to sell anything people will volunteer to buy more and more so I've seen people it's, yeah go ahead, ben. it's kind of like bedside manner so when you go to the doctor and your doctor is really just like this 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 buy you don't want to go and see him again because he's not with you he's not listening to you yeah. so as long as you're providing that bedside manner I mean we're talking about people's health we're talking about their well-being it's the same yeah. thing I mean I'm not a doctor but I'm here to help you yeah. work through these things with a natural solution yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. thank you I think it's born out of love yeah. it's born out yeah. of concern and exactly. feel um, in that person yeah thing, so, so. so um, I want to share the, the secret to <laughs> when I pick somebody to work with, um, I look at their heart. How big is their heart? Because sometimes when I share oils and people buying and using and they're build, they, they want to build, but I just feel like, you know what? I, I don't feel comfortable working with that person because that person doesn't have that heart. And you can't, you know, you have to start with somebody with a heart, right? To, with I mean, they will have hearts, but I'm saying, you know, that, that want to help people, right? So you can't change that person. And so you got to love people. You got to be caring. That that has to be there already. So that's how I decide who I really want to work with. So that's um that's something that I look for. The other thing is when people have a, a difficulty um, empathizing with somebody else, it's because of the lack of self love they have within them. It's sort of like um, they're unable to give love because they're unable to receive love. And we want to, um, to develop that. So sometimes people do have that desire to love others and they don't know why other people are not connecting with them. So I work with them and I help them have a stronger self-love. And that self-love always comes um, by accepting God's love for you and then allowing yourself to be blessed and um, taken care of by the, the universe. So when they develop that, then suddenly they're, they're okay with loving other people because they want to provide for those people. Sometimes you love, but it's just, it's just um, you know, a heartless action. You know, you, you're there, you're serving, but you're not serving wholeheartedly. They feel it. People feel it. Mm. Yeah. So if you love yourself, yeah. you let other people love you. That's right. And you can truly connect with others. Yeah. And, you know, the, the more you can understand um, – them and the more you can add value to them because yeah. you've connected at yeah. a deeper level yeah. so your your um, appreciation and love for yourself enlarges your capacity to feel empathy toward others mm -hmm. and your ability to serve them because you understand them That's and right. you're connected with them they feel that connection yeah yeah so the opposite of it is you know you've seen people who um have been in an abusive relationship sometimes they they allow that abuse because they don't have the self-respect that they, they want. And so sometimes those, um, I'm not saying in that situation, but I'm saying if we just don't respect and love ourselves, we, we create people that, um, that kind of don't honor us and respect us when we talk to them yeah. and we share. It's almost ourselves. like that law of attraction, yeah. you know, if you believe that people don't love you yeah. and you don't love yourself, yeah. then you almost look for that in other yeah. people and, and you, you teach people to yeah. not love you. And, 
and you jump yeah. on that whenever that rears its head. Yeah, and, one of my friends, she was teasing me, but she said, every time I'm with you, I feel like I have to be a better person. <laughs> no, I don't know why. And it's just funny, but I think I, I expect her to love herself more and I expect her to be respectful. And so, I don't know, something like that. I don't know, but it's just inside of me. When she pointed that out, I thought, okay, what is it? Why? <laughs> So, yeah. Anything else, Ben? I don't think so. Awesome. All right. That, that's the point number three, mm -hmm. empathy. And it leads us to authenticity, actually. Um, authenticity is about being humble and coachable, um, but being yourself. And, um, you know, you learn more about yourself when you kind of um, allow yourself to be a bit vulnerable, okay, because you share your journey with people. I remember as I started growing in the business, I, I shared stories about me. And now those stories are, you know, for a long time ago, but I still bring it up. But the people that are right now in the trenches, you know, um, I, I tell them, don't wait until you're all the way better. Don't wait until you're all the way, you know, where the weight that you're at, just share your journey with people. And a lot of people will connect with you more because you're real. Um, mm. You know, because I've been able to achieve better health now, but I can still empathize with people saying, I was there. But sometimes I feel like it's even stronger when somebody's like, I just was there a couple of months ago and I'm here now. And so I see people that have lost a lot of weight and, um, you know, other people will go to that person and ask for tips instead of me because they're like well i can't imagine you being heavier you see so it's really good to have somebody that you know you can just be yourself and share so if you have a website a lot of our, our teammates have a website right now um and you struggle with what do i share i just would say um start with where you're at right now this is my struggle at home this is my struggle with my health and this is what I've discovered. And then you share your story. So remember, stories sell and facts tell. Okay? Facts tell, but stories yeah, tell. It's yeah. the other way. <laughs> and you, you know what? We see this in society. Um, a lot of people are interested in this um, kind of reality show thing where they, they see other people. And these are other humans. It turns out that we're all human. And <laughs> we connect better with people that we, we relate to yeah. as opposed to perfect people with nice shiny teeth and mm -hmm. straight hair that never goes out of place. We don't really connect with those people. Mm -hmm. But um, if we are vulnerable and we, we, yeah. we forgot to file our taxes and we tell our friends, oh, I did the stupidest thing today. I, I forgot my wedding anniversary or something. That would never happen, by the way. <laughs> um, you know, other people say like, oh, yeah, you know what? Yeah, it's a real person. I, yeah. I understand that. I understand where it's coming from. Mm -hmm. So that's, it's, again, where I think it's on the same topic as, you know, connecting with people. Yeah. Um, and that's how that's related. Yeah, that's awesome. Yep. All righty. So that's authenticity. Um, if you need help with authenticity, you can use um, cardamom oil. It helps you take yourself out of your situation and see yourself from a spectator point of view. Okay, so cardamom oil for everybody that needs to be able to see themselves. And of course, you know, talking to your friends will help you see your own concerns. Yeah, yeah. I think it also has an element of honesty, self-honesty, yeah, yeah, being so, honest with yourself. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so that's point number four, or we should say principle number four, yeah. being authentic. Yeah. Um, principle number five is being a product of the product. Um, you know, be, it being in doTERRA, sharing with essential oils with people, you need to use them yourself. Um, so that's what this, this topic is about. Yeah, so you are investing in your business and your health. So as you use it, um, be, just take note of, uh, what the products are doing for you and how you're using it so that your testimony is a true testimony. I've noticed a few people saying, oh, look, you're doing great in the business. I want to do the business too, but they don't want to buy any of the products or hardly any of it, just a couple, and they want to share. And I, I think that 
um, it's difficult for, for people to believe you or to trust you when you don't um, share from the, the heart, from experience. Mm -hmm. um, and, and they may have reasons for wanting to do that. Yeah. Um, maybe they don't feel like they can afford it. Mm -hmm. um, and if, if they have that concern, other the people that they teach are also going to have yeah, that concern um, because they don't value it um, in relation to whatever else they spend their, their money yeah. on, yeah. you know, throughout the month. Yeah. Um, and, you know, you can't expect to start a business without um, investing something. Yeah. It costs money to make money. Yeah. A, a lot of people would agree with that, even, even in this business. But, you know, there's, it costs so little as compared to so yeah. many other yeah. um, ventures out there. You can spread it out to the next you know, six months or so yeah. and say, oh, I'm going to get that soon. I'm so excited about that. And you're authentic. Mm. So people say, well, you're, you've got that on your list. I want to get it too. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so that doesn't mean you have to go out and buy the biggest kit and get no. all the products right now. No. Um, you just do it on a gra yeah. gradual basis, but you are going to have to understand the product. Mm -hmm. Reading about them in a book is very much different than actually using them it, and experiencing yeah. them because you're building experiences and mm -hmm. stories to yeah. share with people. Yeah. Fortunately, you uh, are in doTERRA, and the culture of doTERRA is that we work together as a team. So you don't have a product, you have other people around you that might have that product for you to smell and feel and taste and touch so that you can experience it yourself. Um, and that's another thing that we can do. So I like working together as a team because um, you know people will have a testimony of a product that you might not have. And as help people, you can share that. Mm -hmm. And attending uh, product classes mm -hmm. or is a great way to touch and smell uh -huh. and experience the product. Yep. Like um, maybe you haven't tried yep. the trim shake before and you go to a product class and you get to try it even though you, you didn't buy it. You, yep. you got a bit of experience and you can tell people. So when we moved here, we gradually um, accumulated a second set of everything so that we could bring it to classes. So yep. that's And great. we understand it takes time. Yeah to um you know experience all the products mm -hmm. but that means you're doing it uh, regularly mm -hmm. and you know the time yep so, Alrighty. so that's so that we know principle. beth you know she's jumped right in with two feet and she bought a whole big kit and everything but what do you have anything else to say about this beth? um no i missed some of it my kids just came home so <laughs> i was trying to be respectful but i think the biggest thing is like for me, so I have all the oils and now I'm starting to try the different products. So there are some products that I've used, but at least I have all the oils as a starting point. Mm -hmm. So th I think that's where I would start is, uh -huh. yep. is starting with the basic mm -hmm. to me, which is the oil. Yeah. And I like what you did. You got those little minis in uh, bags, little pouches. It's good because she, she kind of organized it and she figured out which ones she didn't have. So I shared some of my oils with her. So she got a, a complete kit. So at least even if she doesn't have a big 15 meals, she has a mini. So she knows how it smells and how to use it. Yeah. yeah. That Very work. good. Very good. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Thank you. Good. <laughs> All right. The next topic is overcoming fear with faith. Mm -hmm. So this is um, just you reflecting and regularly self, um, self reflecting. Uh, we all have fears, but what makes us different um, from a, a successful person and not successful person is that we don't allow the fear to hold us back. We, we feel it and we move forward anyways. Um, a lot of people say, well, wait until I feel confident. Wait until I feel confident. It's not going to come. Uh, I, I throw myself in and I, I throw other people in <laughs> to, to the deep end. And sometimes they learn how to swim and they turn around and say, well, that wasn't bad. <laughs> so it was scarier. <laughs> but it wasn't. I survived. And that gives them confidence. And I know, like, I, um, one of our teammates, she's uh, silver now. She's almost gold. And she was the same way. She was like, oh, I'm going to teach my first class. I don't know what to do. And now she's like, okay, easy. Bring them on. Bring them on. I can teach for everyone. And it was just so fun to watch people change that way. Okay, but um, the, the way we overcome our fear is just to have that faith that things are going to be okay, that uh, we are going to um, 
be able to do it, just believing that. But, you know, faith is an action thing. We can't have faith just by sitting still and saying, okay, I'm going to try and get confident. I'm going to try. It doesn't work that way. So you must do, just must just find some activity to do. So that activity breeds activity thing. That's how you develop your confidence and your strength. Yeah. So it's belief mm -hmm. and action. So you, you can't just sit, sit around and say, I believe I'm successful. <laughs> I believe I'm successful. Yeah. I believe I'm successful. That's right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What um, do you want to add anything back to that? I don't think so. I mean, sometimes getting thrown in is the best way to try. <laughs> and I'm sorry for all my friends. <laughs> You're friends with Jade. <laughs> yeah. So sometimes, sometimes we need to identify the fear uh -huh. and the false yeah. belief. That's true. And sometimes that requires just some deep thinking. Yeah. And thinking why do I have a problem with this? Why am I uncomfortable standing up in front of people and talking? Um, maybe it was something you were taught when you were a child. Maybe it's a bad experience that you've had. Something has created some belief in yeah. you, maybe but it's, it's not true. It's not, it's not yeah. based on <laughs> truth. Mm -hmm. And if you're able to identify that false belief, uh, then the next step is to get rid of that false belief. And the only way to get rid of it is to replace it with, the truth the and and sometimes that means writing it out thinking about it discussing it with mm -hmm. someone else yep. um you know uh, thoroughly uh, um, exploring it yeah sometimes it means coming up with aff affirmations mm -hmm. statements that you read to yourself every day mm -hmm. you know good enough you know enough yeah um you you can move on uh, those mm -hmm. sorts of things so so i yeah. i felt like when i first started i had Two, I think two or so, I mean, lots of fears, but two big ones that was try stopping me. I felt like I really needed to do this. God wanted me to do this. So I went ahead and did it. But then as I was doing it, I felt like, wait, people have been saying something about MLM. What's that? What's that? And then I learned about it and I thought, what's so scary? I don't know why I'm still scared because they're scared. I'm scared. And then I worked it out and I thought, well, wait, this is just a, a business like any other business. What are they talking about? And so I overcame that. And I thought, oh, well, the, all of their fears are from their false beliefs. And, and, and none of that is, a, is something that I'm experiencing, all that fear. And I thought, okay, now, and I toss that out. And I see people um, worried about um, selling or worried about um, inviting people to join. And so they have a fear about the membership. So they're happy to share, 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 happy to, to teach, teach, teach but they're not inviting people to join. And I thought, okay, well, there's a fear. And so, you know, sometimes I have to find out, oh, is that my fear? Is that their fear? And sometimes we just dig into it and go, oh, wait, there's nothing to be fearful of, but you've got to identify it in order to, to be rid mm -hmm. of it. Because sometimes you say, well, you know, I had a 10 people class and nobody joined. That's weird. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, people might have this belief, a false belief that, all the products are just too expensive. expensive yeah. um, but as they think about it, they look at the numbers and everything and say, oh, well, it's a lot cheaper to clean my house with, mm. um, you know, like this product, the, yeah. the, the, terror, the, the general the uh, purpose cleaner, a lot cheaper than the toxin ridden stuff that they get at the grocery market. Yeah. So as they go through the numbers and they can, they can see, not only is it cheap, because most of the essential oils, we just use a drop at a time. Yeah. Um, and the drops are scents, um, and and you know you're not only that, but think of the other things that you're not paying for the doctor's bills, the you know the other things that come with using um, chemicals and, and other solutions instead. Yeah. So if you add all that up, you know you you start to develop an understanding that hey. I can't afford not to mm -hmm. have these products. And yeah. when you when you when you do that paradigm shift, then all of a sudden you find out that other people don't have that concern. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because you've resolved it inside, yeah. inside yeah. of you. It's you like to, it's almost right. as if the people are Mirror. reading and feeling your feelings and your emotions, not necessarily what you're saying. That's so you may you may be saying with the crooked smile you may be saying yeah these are a really great value but if you don't really feel it inside yeah. i think people can feel that energy and they're yeah. like okay yeah great value um how i'm not convinced i'm not yeah. convinced because yeah. yeah i 
I don't know how you can just read people through that. So, yeah. so um, that's a false belief that you that's can overcome right. just through thinking about it and, and, you know, working it out in your mind and you say, okay, yeah, you know what? It really is a lot better deal to have a membership than to buy these things retail. Oh, yeah. that, that's an easy one to figure out. But yeah. still, some people are stuck on the membership. Oh, you're stuck into things. Oh, I love that. There's nothing about being stuck. I'm going you to name her. Our that. friend Beck, she was, she's the one of the top enrollers on our team because she has this testimony, this very strong belief that this is the best way to buy. And whenever she meets anybody that's buying at retail, she just can't understand. And just her passion comes through and everyone's like, well, I was doing it, you know, in a, I was choosing wrong. <laughs> and I'm like, let me join now. And she was just enrolling and enrolling. And I'm thinking, oh, Beth, this, you know, her name is Beck, actually. And she's amazing. Yeah. Um, she, she's saving me so much money. <laughs> so so, so, so sometimes you just need to sell it to yourself. Yeah. And selling just means you're yeah. listing out all the benefits. Um, these are all, this is why. Yeah. This is good for yeah. you. This you why do, this you do have to work you. it out in your head. Yeah. One of our friends, she's been paying an extra, um, extra hundred dollars per month uh, for her insurance, and it was just for the extra bits. And she was telling me it's been six months. We haven't gone to the the doctors, and then she said, like, "You know what? Uh, I don't know if we need this extra." So she's thinking of rearranging it so that she could actually don't pay that extra hundred dollars. She has insurance, but she wants to get rid of that and use that hundred dollars to buy the oils because she's seeing that her family's well and she's wasting money there and she's rearranging it because she now sees the value. Mm -hmm. So she's selling it to herself that mm -hmm. way. So yeah. yeah. Okay, that's overcoming fear yeah, with, with faith. faith. So we'll move on to um, point number seven here. Okay, so this principle is important to be organized. <laughs> so that's uh, something that everybody needs to work on. Um, it's planning months ahead. Like I said, sometimes you don't know what's going to happen, but we'll, let's plan it out anyways. And we'll, we'll take it a week at a time. But it's good that we, we have it scheduled. And that means things will happen. We're opening ourselves up for miracles to happen. Okay. Um, so if so you, these topics are interrelated. Mm -hmm. but. So if you fail to plan, you're planning to fail. So that's what it is. Um, so things will work out and it will, things will fall into place. Um, so you're organizing uh -huh. your time, you're yep. organizing your, your life. Mm -hmm. um, putting things into blocks, you know, I'm yep. going to spend this time prospecting, this time supporting people. And, you know, you also um, have people and things that will take that time or distract you. Yeah, the energy suckers. <laughs> so when you have a doTERRA time block, within that time block, you must, you know, schedule time for different things, for mentoring, for training. So like training tonight or listening to the training later on. So whatever it is, you need to make the time for that. But then you also, like Ben said, you have people that will suck your energy. And um, because you know who you are, that you are a business person and what you're doing, <clears throat> you will know to, to say no to those people. Yep. And sometimes those people are your loved ones, your, yeah. your family. Sometimes yeah. it's your family that's saying, you're at home. I have to go to an office every day. Yeah. But you need to tell them, I'm a business owner and I work from home. That's right. This is the time I've scheduled. Can I talk to you about that at 3 o'clock? Yeah. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. you know, you're the master of your time and yeah. you need to tell them and you have yeah. to believe it yourself. You're yeah. you're a business owner now. Yeah. So, and this yeah. is your business time. You know, you're not you know even our kids we do people who work in an office aren't gonna let you rock up and, and use their time while they're working. You know, the 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 yeah. excuse that, Oh, I'm working right now, I can't do that. Well, that works for people in an office. Yeah. That needs to work for you right. when you have a home-based business as well. So we tell our kids too, we, um, we worked till about five and then we spend a little bit of time with them and then we'll, we'll, we have not even in classes that so we tell them, you know, for this next hour we'll be working. So they respect that. They try not to come in and disrupt us. So we have uh, some mums. I tell them to make a little sign and have the kids make it so they know what they're doing. So mummy's at work and then just hang it on the doorknob. And so they know from this time to this time, don't disturb mum unless there's a fire or something, you know. Mm -hmm. And so they, that's, that's a good way for mums to incorporate and be able to work from home 
but also tell them when you will be available yeah. for them. Otherwise, it sends a message that says, you're not as important as my business. Yeah. Instead, if you say, look at, um, I'm going to have all this time with you after yeah. between after five o'clock, it's just going to be me and you, you kids. Yeah. Um, they know that they have been thought of first because yeah, right. your family comes first, mm -hmm. but you also have to organize your life. We have some cultures where it's mikasa sukasa kind of deal. Um, so I know Vietnamese culture is sort of like that. So if you're at home, they think that you're doing nothing. So, <laughs> so they <laughs> hand you all their problems. Yeah, Here, call, so call this um, telephone company. Call this, take yeah, care of this insurance. Yeah, I'm busy. I've got to go like, to work. Okay, I'll do that after 6 o'clock. That's yeah. when I'm done with my business. So if you are, you know, in a relationship like that with your family, just let them know that you're going to be working. And as you honor yourself, they will respect you too. So every time they ask you to do something, you can say, well, I'll be able to do that after five, or let me find some time at this time. And they realize that you're actually serious about this job and it's not a hobby. Mm -hmm. um, yep, and that's yeah. a good thing that you said. Mm -hmm. Most everyone will respect your time if you respect mm -hmm. your time. That's right. This is your doTERRA time. You respect that time, and you don't budge. And then they—they no, they love yeah, you. They, your, you. they are your loved ones, and they'll say, "Oh, this is important for you. Yeah. I'll, I'll do that." Yeah, I just remember my mom and dad. They ran their own business, and um, you know they had family members dropping off their kids to their in their home and saying, "Hey, I gotta go here and do that, and here babysit and watch these kids." And they didn't ask, they just came, and my parents were like, ah, we're working. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, we just need to understand that people... We might have to yeah. find another babysitter, yeah. pay that person and charge that person. <laughs> yeah. So anyways, we'll tell you about the 80-20 rule. Okay, so this is um, sometimes called the Pareto Principle, um, sometimes known you, as the 80-20 rule. Have you heard about that, Beth? Sorry, I had you on mute. My son is in the room. Um, I have not. Well, it sounds familiar, but I don't know about it. So basically, it means that um, for many events, roughly 80% of the effects come from 20% of the causes. So this can be applied in, in all areas of life. So 80% um, of the benefit that's coming from your business comes from 20% of the people. Yeah. 80% um, of the problems in your business come from 20% of the people. Yep. And so if you want to eliminate those problems, you just eliminate those people. The troublemakers. Um, eliminate the troublemakers. <laughs> um, and if you want to expand on your profits, yeah. you, you focus, focus on that 20% of, of those activities that are creating those yeah. that 80% of the profits. Yeah. So that's that's the principle. And applying that principle is just spending most of your time doing what is productive for your business. That means cutting out the fat. Um, you know, it's usually the 20% the, the of the people who are moving toward you or working with you. Mm -hmm. And it's it's it means stop chasing mm -hmm. and bending over backward to please the people. Who are not moving we're not budging mm -hmm. it, over and over again we have seen people like they come to us and say can, can you show me the um the scientific journal of medicine that says that um peppermint essential oil won't kill you or mm -hmm. that this peppermint essential oil is good for um vitality or or you know good for um breath and stuff well who needs to see the medical journals it's because they're trying to convince someone that has already decided against it. And so they're spending all their time doing all this research and everything, trying to go after the, you know, this one person because they think, oh, I've got to convince everybody. If I can't convince that person, you know, I've failed. That's not, it's not true. That's the, that's the 80, that's the 20% yeah. of the people that don't spend your time because you're going to be spending 80% of your time trying to convince that 20% of people. Forget about them. There are people out there waiting for you, looking for this, mm -hmm. open to natural mm -hmm. solutions. Spend 80% of your time on those 20% of the people who are ready, willing, and, you know. Yeah, you'll start identifying those people pretty quickly. We have people that tell us, oh, we're so excited. We're going to do the business. We're going to do all these things. And they, they're just sucking the energy out, but there's no result. 
And so it's really good to be watching out for that and saying, look, I think I'm going to switch to my attention to um, another builder now. So we, we have to drop a few people that we're mentoring. Um, you know, for the last few years, when we start to mentor a group, we might have to drop a few people because we realize that these people, they're just still, you know, spinning their wheels, but they're not getting anywhere because they're, they're trying to, mm. to still convince themselves of something, you know, and it, let them figure it out. But it's like, wait a minute spend too much time with you um not and, and sometimes that's a difficult conversation yeah. to have but it's yeah. best for both sides yeah. um to i guess fire <laughs> um and and uh, you know I, I just read a book recently where he's talking about the Pareto principle and he's saying you know what there's going to be some of those friends of yours yeah. that are just going to eat up your time and and you just need to sever that relationship mm -hmm. um because it, it's going to be pulling you down um, and that, that sometimes is a hard thing for, for people to deal with. Yeah. Um, but it's it's a conversation that needs to happen. And you, you know, feel so free. You feel so much freer when you yeah. do that. Yeah. yeah. And we've had those people in our business that they cause all the problems and they're just sucking your time. You're spending mm -hmm. like four hours in your day trying to solve this person's problems that they couldn't be. They Find couldn't be bothered um, looking up a website and they, they want you to do all this work for them. So, you know, they could just feel better about themselves. Mm -hmm. They're like, you know what, here, and it's not being mean. You can just say, you need to do this and go go there and do that. Mm -hmm. And when you're done, come back to me. Yeah. So put the monkey on their back to, yeah. to <laughs> put it in the words of a, a yeah. famous um, management consultant. Mm -hmm. so, so be organized, um, meaning you got to plan on where you're going to. So a lot of people if I if I'm more familiar with their team structure than they are then I know that they haven't gone on to the back office as much um, so they should be able to answer the question where is the next person you roll go yep and yep. that actually brings us to the eighth point yeah so being organized is knowing your team and yep. knowing where where you're going to put people and so that, Point number eight is embrace the back office. And for those of you who are new to the business, back office just means when you log into mydoTerra.com or doTERRA and you see, um, you know, that's where you order your things and you have a team tab and, and under that team tab, you're able to see everybody on your team. That's the back office. That's what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, um, you know, I leave it to people because there's some people that are very good with computers. So I don't want to be babysitting and spoon feeding everyone. As so I know when I, I signed up my sister, when I started to help her with it, she's like, I already know that I've gone there. I've seen that. And I thought, Oh my goodness, how, how lovely to hear that. Um, so I just let people ask questions. If you don't know, um, if you haven't explored, then ask the questions. We're happy to answer, but it's the people that just don't want to look and explore and then, you know, they complain that they don't know what they're doing there and they don't know where to go to. And it's it's not terribly difficult. So if you don't know, spend some time with your back office and figure it out and ask questions if you need to. But that will tell people that you've, you've put forth some effort because this is your business. You need to be the proactive person that, you know, you're putting some um, work into it and try to find out yourself. And then we will match it. And all the leaders will match your efforts. Um, we won't do more than you because I've, I've done that. But, you know, I've done a lot of work for people. And I realize at the end of the day, they still are not organized. They still haven't overcome their fears. And they're sucking out the 80% of my time. And so I thought, okay, this is a much wiser. So I tell my team and all the leaders that are, you know, because as soon as they start to tell me a story about somebody that's like ruined their day, and I say, don't let that person do that again. So don't be too anxious to enroll that person. Forget it. Let that person go. She'll figure it out herself. Let her go. Give her a link. Let her read the articles. You don't have to find and underline everything. Let it go. Be okay with that. And so that will build their confidence. Um, because imagine if that person joined your team. It's just trouble and more trouble. So we have the guy, Timothy Ferris. He said that there was two big customers um, in his business that were draining 
draining their business. And, you know, both... That took like 80 or 90%. Yeah, and so nobody wanted to deal with them because every time they called and they complained, it's like, oh, you, you talk to them. And so what happened was he realized that was the people that are sucking out and the life out of his business making it no fun anymore so he decided yep I'm just going to tell them what I need to tell them said so, you know it's treat us with more respect talk to us you know when you can um, but you know you got to do this and this, this too before you complain and so one client stopped they were nice after that and one client said no okay if you're going to be like that I'm not going to and they were happy to sever that relationship but and all was, of a sudden he had, and he had life 80% again. more time. Yeah, more time. <laughs> Such a relief. So I've learned that. Um, and, and he was able yeah. to find a lot more of those good clients. Yeah, yeah, I've learned that you can just say no to certain people because if they're not healthy for your business, we'll just spread the poison and it's just not going to be happy mm. for every, anybody. And, and embracing the back office means you're looking at your team, you're mm. thinking about them, and just that practice of thinking about them will breed inspiration and, and oh, be able yeah, to identify. Sure. I, I see people buying, I see people sharing, and I see people's team growing, and I see people's team growing funny. And so I know uh, by just looking at the, the office that, oh, this person needs instruction on, on structure. Okay, maybe they didn't understand that video that we had, or maybe we need a one-on-one -on -one talk about that. You know, you can see so much. Well, we had a conversation with a guy who had nine, 199 um, and the promotion was 200 PV and um, you know I had to contact him quickly and say did you realize that you just missed out on the frankincense promotion you know, it's just little things like that because you're there you're checking they they feel that you care mm. yep it's almost they can feel that you're yeah. just thinking about them <laughs> Yep. Yeah. Okay. So that's. Um, and I tell you, a lot of people that have been on there for months and months or years, um, you know, and they're ordering one or two things. Sometimes I, I would just think, I feel like I need to text this person this promotion, and suddenly they buy. But not only that, they they thank me for thinking of them, and then they become this. This just that saying things like, "Hey, I had a friend that was asking about the oils. How do I enroll this person?" So it's happened so many times. People have been activity just, breeds activity. Yeah. That's point number yeah. one. People have been oh, yeah. met, uh, just a buyer, a user for a long time, and suddenly now they want to build. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I remember, people are people, and so yeah. most people will be happy for you to contact them because as long as you're you're um, concerned for them, you're adding value that to them. Instead you do it for their sake. Yeah, exactly. Instead of uh, saying buy this and you get this and, yeah. and, and you're not really connecting with yeah. them. Um, yeah. That feels fake and yeah. forced. And um, I had a friend that was mad at me for down. not sharing the promotion this month. She's like, well, yes, yeah, the 15th almost. And you haven't told me the promotion. And I thought, Oh, I'm so sorry. You know? <laughs> and so she was expecting some connection. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that brings us to the next point. Um, slight edge. So Jade, what does a slight edge mean? Well, it's using, it's doing something consistently um, and allowing it to grow and allowing the results to, to flourish. But you need to be consistent. So you need to do the small and simple things with a positive attitude and expecting, um, expecting it will grow somehow. Yeah. But, no, it, you know, you, you're going to have highs and lows in your business. You expect that. But at the end of the day, that, that will start to curve upwards. It's going to be difficult at first to adjust to something new. So if you have a, this new business and you have to schedule this time, it's, it's a new thing and it might be difficult. But after a while, it just becomes a habit and yeah. um, you, you grow into it and it is easier. This, this phrase it was, is coined by um, Jeff Olson. It comes from a book called The Slight Edge. So it just means just that. And he explains it really well where it's, you know, you're doing those small little things that don't seem to matter mm -hmm. at, at all, you know, don't seem to make a difference today. Mm -hmm. But by regularly doing those things over a long period of time will make a huge difference in the end. And we're all familiar with this principle. Yeah. Like if you eat right and exercise today, it's not going to really make a difference in your life today. Mm -hmm. But if you do that every day for the next year, it will make a huge difference in, in your health and your life. Same thing if you apply this principle in any other 
some regard. So in your doTERRA business, um, it means, um, and, this, and the way you apply this to your doTERRA business is you're teaching regularly, consistently. Um, regular classes every Two single a day. every single week. You have a couple classes, every, and even if you have it scheduled, and you're you're handing out flyers and you're talking to people, and no one shows up, you're at least doing it. You have it scheduled, and mm -hmm. you've created it in your mind, and it's more likely to pan out. You're talking with people regularly, talking with people regularly connecting with your teammates, building friendships mm -hmm. that may or may not down the track add, um, you know, yeah. come to, a, you know, be someone that you can share essential oils with. It doesn't matter. You build more friendships and re more relationships and more, uh, more opportunity mm -hmm. you have to share your passion with people. So sticking with that regular consistent effort will yield fruit um, so time. I've had lots of classes where people don't show up so I have classes with one person but I remember I shared with one lady and she said oh can you come to my uh, gym and talk to my boss and so from there I met her boss and then we just opened up a whole community and I think within a very short time we had about 300 people joining the team and I just felt like if I didn't just consistently go to that one class if that one lady didn't come I wouldn't have met this lady which opened a whole gym up to me and you know I just feel like I'm glad that I was consistent and um, you know it just sometimes you just have to just go on faith you know just uh, share a little bit I open up my back office and learn a little bit today and you know learn a bit about the oils I practice using it whatever it is um, and it adds up so Beth You've read that book recently, haven't you? I did what? Oh yeah, I've been reading that book. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and it is, every time you do a little bit more, a little bit more, it's, it just builds on it. Yeah. Mm. yeah. We've, paced, we've put a link to that book on, on that website, yeah. um, on that page. Where we, so in case what, you want to buy it and read yeah, it. Yeah, um, because you gotta get the right slight edge book. <laughs> Apparently there's another book it's with awesome. the same title that doesn't tell it that it's different. doesn't tell you anything about what we're telling you about yeah it's funny so yeah yeah, yeah. great principle and applicable in many areas in your life so yeah. that's principle number nine and guys even if you don't feel like it and that's the thing sometimes we give into our feelings we say oh i'm so tired i don't feel like it today i don't feel like getting up and exercising i don't feel like getting up and just talking to two people um just do it anyways I tell people, um, go on to Facebook and make friends with two people. If you can't get out, you can't uh, meet with a friend or whatever, you do something, then you can go, oh, okay, I did it. I did the slight edge today. And it will build up. You never know. You never know. Yep. Yeah. And you know what? It's just, you know, commenting on someone's post or just an in, yeah. in exchange with someone or, you know, yeah. dropping an email to someone that you've been thinking about recently. Yeah. Okay. So on to principle number 10, which is uh, love and add value to that target customer. Again, with a love um, thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, we talked about this a few weeks ago, the avatar. So the avatar really means just your target customer. We, it doesn't mean those blue people you know, that live in um, <laughs> Pandora. Yeah, so you really have to know who you're, you're, you're here to help. And I think this liberated me when I was trying to help so many people, so many different things. I was pulled in all the different directions and I was trying to research and learn and, and try to help everybody. And what I really found was I really enjoyed this group of people. I wanted to help mums. I wanted to help um, women that, uh, like grandmas, who are mums too. And I've found that these are the people that I really enjoy being with. And there's other people too, but I think it was just so tiring to, to meet their needs. And when I just allowed myself to limit to just my particular target audience, then it was so liberating. And I was able to, when I type um, a post, when I do a blog, when I do a Liar. I just know exactly what to say because I'm just thinking of that person, a person that represents that person in mind, and I just write so that that person um, can get it. And then people that are, it's not relevant to, that's okay, I don't mind. But if, it, if it's the relevant people, then they will get it. It's sort of like advertising. If you, if you're like the owner of like Victoria's Secret, I mean, they, you know, they have a particular audience. 
you know, it's not like baby food, baby clothes or whatever. So, you know, if, if you're not their target audience, it's, it's okay. You know, you can, there's other stores for you. Same thing. I feel like, um, you know, if, if you're just focusing on this audience, that's, that's what who you, you, and there's plenty of people to work with. Yeah. Yeah. And you'll be able to love them and serve them well. Um, so, yeah, that's an important part. Yeah. And those are the people you can connect with. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else to say about that? That is point number 10. That, yeah. that, are, that is our top 10. Those show. are our top 10 smart business strategies and tips. Um, a lot of it just seems like principles. A lot of it seems like just, you know, um, to, you know, generic general, uh, general. win friends and influence uh, friend, people. win influence friends and people, yeah, type of ideas. But that's exactly what it is. Um, yeah, that's what business is—is is just interacting with people. And 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 Beth, even in, in your business, you know, you, you'd realize that it's a, it's a lot about relationships, and awesome. people are buying not just the product. You know, that's kind of a Trust. side thing, mm -hmm. um, but they're buying you. Mm -hmm. you're and especially in um you know doTERRA you are the thing that people are buying yeah. In, so. mm -hmm. yeah. yeah well awesome thank you so much for joining mm -hmm. us tonight yeah so that um brings our class to a close again if you um want to read more about this you want to download the handout that we that we that we're sh sharing here um that's available um and you can leave a comment in this video or share the i you know this is i in itunes just go onto itunes and search for jade balden and you'll pull up the podcast do you have any other what about androids yep um you can do the same thing on androids um there is actually a podcast app because I, I know a lot of people um have, have androids okay um for those of you who are watching the video I'll share it. Those of you who aren't watching the video, just imagine in your mind. So um, if you go to the watch uh, past classes, that's where the, the link is. You can see all of our videos there. Um, just at the bottom here, um, where it talks about the iTunes, um, there is an app for Android, and it's also on Amazon Kindle, just called Podcast Addict. There's a lot of apps that do this, um, but I, I installed this on like an Amazon device um, and you can just go in there and search and mm -hmm. you can click uh, Google search or iTunes search because we actually mm -hmm. use Google um, products to um, you know provide the RSS feed for the um, for the podcast and um, it's available on iTunes easy to find and, up and download and everything and, and of course we have our YouTube channel as well where you can go and subscribe to that you'll get regular um, feeds of whenever we post a video and so um, you can get all this content if you're not able to come and join us um, online at that time you can still uh, you know hear all the things that we have to say so yeah so that's everything for thank everybody you. again yeah. thank you for um, Beth joining us tonight and thank you yeah. for all those hundreds of other people that are there listening and watching us in the background we really appreciate your love and support as well. Um, we know that you're there. And um, yeah, I'll we'll wish everybody a good night, good morning, good day, good life. Bye. Um, bye. bye.